Hello again. So now we're going to just quickly chat on what WordPress users are. And if you're not familiar with what a user is, it's basically just your account on any site that is run using WordPress. So that could be you as the blogger, um, or it could be someone who is a commenter and wants to have registered in order to fill out a comment, or it could just simply be another sort of form of subscriber that you have plugged into your website. So assuming you're a WordPress beginner, this will basically be a walkthrough of how you can set up your own account and perhaps another account, another user account for some friends or family that you want to include on your blog. So all you do is scroll over to the left side of the screen and click on users. This is after you've logged in, of course. And then this is the back to the back end of Modern Lessons, and we only have two users right now. But right now we're using me and my friend Adam, and let's just say we want to create a new user. We just simply click up here, add new user. Uh, you'll need to pick a dynamic or unique username, so that could be whatever you want. So we'll just say it's whatever. The email has to be one that um, the person can access because that's where they're. Uh, password and other things and all their alerts are going to be sent to, but for all intents and purposes, we're just going to use whatever at AOL.com. Um, obviously, that's not our account. And you can say that their first name is, we'll use my own, first name is Jeff, last name done. And the website um, listing, you can put anything you want in there, and typically this will appear under any listing where it says by the article, this article written by XYZ, and then it'll either link to their website that you put in here, um, or it'll outright just say the link. It'll write out the entire link. So it'll say this article written by Jeff Dunn, Google.com, that kind of thing. Uh, the password can be whatever you want. You can always change it later. Um, I'm just using a standard password. You can opt to send the password to the new user by email. If they're waiting for it, then this is good to do, but usually you don't need to send it to them and you can just shoot them an email yourself. Um, and now the most important part of the whole lesson right now, I hope that you've been keeping, keeping up, uh, is the role, the user role. So there are a handful of different roles that users can have. and. When I say role, I simply mean that the permissions that they have and the kind of stuff they can access on the side here. Um, if they wanted to mess around with your site design, your blog design, install plugins and that kind of stuff, then you'd probably want them to be an administrator right here. But if not, if you want them to just be focusing on your blog content and not actually messing with the colors of your theme or anything like that, then I would make them an editor, which lets them change any post written by anybody. It doesn't have to be written by themselves. So when you think about it, it's like a newspaper editor. A newspaper editor would be able to edit anybody's article, um, including their own. An author only has access to any posts, blog posts that they've written. They can't view or change the post written by other people. That's reserved for editors. Contributor is a very useful user role where you can set up an account for somebody and they're not able to publish immediately. What they get to do is have full access to writing a blog post, but they have to click a big blue button that says submit for review. So if you have a friend or want somebody to do a guest post, then you can make them a contributor. And they'll write a whole thing and basically then they can submit it for review to you and you'll be alerted to that. Uh, and the final one, we have a couple others just due to some plugins here, but you can ignore the bottom two. Um, the final one is subscriber, which is the lowest form of access you can grant to someone. And that's basically just the only thing they can do is write their own profile and edit all of this stuff here. Um, that is literally it. They don't When they log in, they won't see 90% of this stuff on the left and the only thing they can do is edit their own information. They can't even blog post um, or post a blog. But that's about it. So now we're going to hit add new user and we've created a subscriber named whatever and that person just got an email saying welcome to Modern Lessons and we hope you enjoy your stay. Um, in order to change the avatar or the favicon, whatever you want to call it, um, 
you have to use a service called Gravatar, G-R-A-V-A-T-A-R.com, and that's run by the WordPress folks. And if you go there, I'll just show you real fast. If you go to Gravatar.com, you can log in, and as you see right here, this is the guy who built WordPress. Um, he has his little profile there, and basically it'll walk you through setting up your own profile image. Personally, I find it a little annoying that they don't integrate it into the site, but I can see how it would be useful for if you're commenting on a bunch of different sites. In any case, um, now we can walk through just a few things that you see after your an official user on your site. Um, disabling the visual editor, you don't really want to do. That just means you want to write your entire blog post in code, uh, in HTML code, and that's not for most people. Uh, the color scheme, you can make it blue or gray. I stick with uh, gray, but blue is what it used to be on WordPress, so if you like the color blue, even though I do, um, feel free, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the keyboard shortcuts are a little complex. I'd suggest you click more information here um, to check that out. Toolbar is this thing up on the top, um, and that'll follow you around no matter where you are on the site. And you can disable that by unchecking that and then hitting save. Um, and then the only thing that you can't edit anymore is the username, and that's still whatever. Uh, you can always go and change the role for someone, including yourself. So if the subscriber told you they wanted to guest post, then you would want to make them a contributor. Very good. You've been paying attention. Um, so we'll upgrade that to contributor. And you can change your first name, last name, in case you get married or any kind of name changes. Display name publicly, you can change how it shows up. And that, that'll really say under a blog post, this blog post written by, and then you can change it to say whatever, Jeff, done, Jeff, done, done, Jeff, anything you want. Uh, email you can change, which is handy, and that's definitely worth keeping up with if you get a new email account. Um, your social media stuff here, some themes leverage that, some don't. Biographical info, that's pretty useful because a lot of themes um, have blog posts written by XYZ, a link to their website, and then their blurb here, the biographical info. So that's worth filling out. Um, and that's about it. A lot of this stuff right here is just things filled out, um, added by a plugin called WooCommerce, which runs a store. So you can ignore that. We'll hit update user. And there you go. User updated. Not too hard, right? You can always access it on the left if you want to add a new user, just like we did. Click add new. And there you go.